This video has been brought to you by the Fresno Mycology Society. Okay, welcome back. We last left off with our newly made sterile DIY Petri dishes. Now it's time to get growing. In this tutorial, we will outline five methods which we can use to inoculate a clean agar plate. Before we begin, we should note that we have drilled one pencil sized hole into the lids of all of our mason jar lids and filled them slightly with polyfill. This will act as an air exchange port that will effectively filter out all outside airborne contaminants. This should ideally be done before the agar is poured into the jars in order to cut down your chances of contaminating your agar by exposing them to the air while you switch out your lids. We will start with fresh tissue culture. This involves taking the cleanest piece from the inside of a mushroom body and placing it onto our agar. Once you have a fresh mushroom in hand, take all the necessary precautions and sterilize in your workspace, whether that be a countertop, workbench, or still at a glove box. Not neglecting to sterilize yourself as well as any tools you will use. For your typical cap and stem mushroom, using a knife or razor, go ahead and score all the way across the top of the cap, making sure to pass as close to the center point as possible. Then peel apart the two halves. The tissue on the inside of the stem is your best bet, being that it is the most protected tissue from outside contamination. Now take an X-Acto knife and thoroughly flame sterilize it until it is red hot. Then let it cool for a few seconds. Now make two horizontal cuts about a quarter inch apart. Then use a razor to peel a thin layer of tissue from the top slice to the bottom. Now simply crack open your lid just enough to allow you to wipe the tissue onto the agar. A few tips here that will give you the highest chance of success by minimizing your chances of contamination are 1. As mentioned, don't completely uncover your plate in order to prevent any falling contaminants from infiltrating your culture or falling onto the inside surface of your lid. And 2. Do your best to keep your hand from hovering over the top of the agar for the same reason as the last. Instead, hold your blade like a fork to keep it as far from underneath your hand as possible. Once you've placed your tissue, seal your lid and place it in a cool, dark place. Now, on to the second method of inoculation, spore transfer. This is one of the simplest techniques if you've got a clean spore print on hand. Like before, make sure your working area is thoroughly sterilized. Now with the burner or whatever flame source you have available, flame sterilize your inoculation loop. If you don't have one and don't care to order one, you can easily make one by spinning some jeweler's wire tightly around a pen tip, paper clip, or any thin cylindrical object. After you flame sterilize your loop, gently scrape it along the surface of your clean agar. This acts to cool it down as well as transferring some agar to your loop, which will help your spores to cling to it. Now go ahead and scrape the loop across the cleanest and heaviest part of your print. Then swap the loop onto your agar in a zigzag pattern. Now seal up your lids and place them in a suitable place for incubation. The third method we will outline is the agar to agar wedge transfer method. In this method you will need an agar plate that has already been cleanly colonized by the desired mushroom strain. Then with a flame sterilized razor, cut a wedge of mycelium from the plate preferably at the leading edge of the culture as this is the most vigorous and active site of mycelial growth. After you have removed your wedge, go ahead and place it at the center of your new Petri plate. Now onto the fourth method, liquid culture inoculation. To perform this transfer method, we will need a sterile syringe and needle. To do this, we are going to bring a pot of water up to boil and begin sucking up and squirting out the boiling water full to capacity, making very sure not to pull the plunger all the way out and splashing scalding hot water onto yourself. Do this about 10 times and then evacuate all the water and cap your syringe. Now you may notice that the interior of the syringe is open to the air at the top of the tube. This being the case, be very careful not to overhandle the syringe between here and inoculation. Now before we use our syringe, swirl your liquid culture to break up the mycelium that often condenses at the bottom. Make sure to gently swirl and don't shake it. If you shake your jar like a Polaroid picture, you can force the liquid culture up onto your polyfill filter and thus allow outside contamination to pass to infiltrate your jar. Or worse still, your poly might pop out altogether, at which point you will proceed into the face palm position. Now dampen a wipe with some isopropyl alcohol and clean off the injection port of the lid of your liquid culture. Take your syringe and flame sterilize the tip. Then wipe it along your tissue of isopropyl to cool it down. Now pierce the center of your injection port and suck up some culture, tipping the jar to the side as necessary. Now you want to make sure the mycelium is thoroughly broken up where it can plug your syringe or settle at the bottom before you can suck it up. 
If swirling the liquid doesn't do the trick, go ahead and suck up a full syringe of liquid and quickly but carefully force it back into the jar. The turbulence will help break up the culture. Do this a few times until you are satisfied, and then suck up a few cc's of culture and remove your syringe. Now these plates are fairly small, so we will only need a tiny bit of culture to do the trick. Go ahead and crack open your jar and squirt a cc of culture onto your agar. Then seal it up and store it for incubation. The final technique we will outline is the grain transfer method. This is one of the simplest techniques involving the fewest steps, provided you have a jar of colonized grain. To do this, flame sterilize a pair of tweezers and allow it to cool. Then crack open a lid of grain culture and pluck out a piece. A single grain or kernel is all that's necessary. Then take that piece and place it onto the center of the agar, then seal and store for incubation. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, then put them down below. You can also follow us on Facebook and Flickr or on our website at fresnomycology.org. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this in the future, you can donate to the Fresno Mycology Society on Patreon. Thank you.